everyone. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and let's leave no die behind. While filming one of the 2019 Chemnitz Hanukkah special videos, I had a lot, a lot of leftover dye. My smallest measuring spoon is a quarter teaspoon, and so that's a lot of dye, and I pulled out a lot so we could get ready to play around with some different citric acid and speckling techniques. That video is awesome, by the way, and I think that I learned a lot from it. But we've got a lot of leftover dye, and so I'm not sure how many skeins we're going to be dyeing today, but we're going to start with three skeins of Knit Picks Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn. This yarn is 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon. I am putting this yarn into my steam pan. Um, this is actually leftover pre-soak water that had vinegar in it from that same episode. And I'm going to start layering on this dye. I'm going to speckle the dye, move the yarn around, speckle, move, sort of in a very continuous way without pausing a ton in between. This is going to allow us to get some spread from the color and I think overall will just be really, really pretty and fun. I did not pre-soak the yarn, but I added it to the pan while dry. And well, I guess I let it soak a bit while we were heating things up to start speckling. Of course, while I was dealing with the dye powders, I wore my respirator, safety glasses, and gloves to keep myself safe and prevent inhalation of any of the powders. I did let our yarn heat up in my catering full-size chafer pan, which is four inches deep. That's the one that I use. Um, I did let it heat up before I started speckling on the color. If you enjoy these Leave No Dye Behind videos, don't forget to subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel and press that bell icon to turn on notifications so you never miss a new video. I release new videos every Tuesday and Friday morning without fail, even during the holidays, so that way you have something fun to escape to if needed. Also, you can check out the video description of all of my videos to find links, affiliate links to the materials and some of my favorite dyeing equipment. Um, so that way, if you have any questions about any of the things that I'm using in these videos that maybe I don't talk about, you can find more information down there in the video description. I find these leave no dye behind videos to be extremely freeing because I'm taking leftover materials and just combining them and seeing where the colors and the yarn take me. And I adapt the way and the methods that I'm using based on what I see the color doing. So today, I wasn't sure if I wanted to add a ton more color and go for something super, super saturated. I certainly have enough dye that I could have kept going further and further. But I enjoyed this wash of color we were getting so much that I exercised some restraint and worried less about using up all of the dye that I had and focused more on the way that these colors were speaking to me. I think that with the look I wanted to achieve for this yarn, it might have been a bit easier for me to stick with two skeins in one pan. I think that three was a little crowded and so I would just move the yarn and more dye, move the yarn and more dye again and again and again until I was satisfied. And what we created feels so reminiscent of broken violet if it were a powder and I could speckle with it. The bright blue finish, the magenta, the purples, I am so unbelievably excited with where this yarn has gone. Uh, after I finished added the, adding the dye, I went ahead and let the yarn sit here in the pan for a good 15 minutes with the heat on low. By moving the yarn around so much, we allowed the colors to strike quickly still because there's plenty of acid in here, but it gave us that wash and that spread and that halo. So the backdrop of this yarn is not just a pale blue, it's not just a pale purple, but there's a variegated random watercolor nature to that color on the backdrop as well. I'm not sure if these colors are coming through true on camera, but I am really, really excited with this yarn. And I think it's gonna be sort of this beautiful non-repeating 
ultimately fairly subtle yarn that could look nice with a lot of different stitch patterns. While waiting at the end, I added some more of that original acidic pre-soak just to uh, let and make sure everything is, has time to dissolve nicely in the pan. Once the yarn had cooled completely, I washed it in cool water um, to make sure that all of the color was dissolved and to rinse out any excess color, if there was any, which there wasn't. I use a little bit of dish soap. Sometimes this will allow you to see bleeding that could happen. And if it passes the soap test, then I can take a deep sigh of relief. But after the washing step, I always put the yarn through my Nina Soft spin dryer, um, which Nina Soft gave me for free. I'm not sure if that spin dryer is available anymore, um, but uh, I love, love, love having a spin dryer. Uh, and then I hang up the yarn to dry. This yarn is so much fun. And I honestly don't think that these pictures I have right here do it justice. The yarn has this pale blue and purple base with heavy magenta speckles, magenta and purple speckles, some hints of blue speckles, and some patches of brighter blue and pink. It is fun and subtle, and there's three of them. And so that, my friends, is especially awesome. Even with the number of times that we flipped and layered the yarn, there are still some paler patches, but I think that it overall mixes together very beautifully. I think that this technique when I was going for this spread and this application of speckles might have been a little bit easier uh, if I had only had two in a pan. And I could have done this twice and gotten similar results, um, but with three skeins in the pan, things were a little more crowded, so it was hard to get harder to get even color application. Of course, this is just going to add interest to the final yarn. And so that is something to keep in mind. What technique do you want to achieve? What do you want to show? Um, and then consider how you are going to apply the dye in those situations. Now, in this particular situation, I wanted to see where the dye would take me. It's leave no dye behind. So, you know, that intent and planning step wasn't necessarily there. But don't be afraid midstream to say remove yarn from the pan and to sort of take everything in a completely different direction. Um, you're the artist and it's your journey and you can modify it as you please or keep going the way things are. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and I really hope that you enjoyed this video. Uh, what do you think of Leave No Die Behind as a series? I sort of took these random videos and gave them this name um, and I know that they're less tutorials and more just watching me throw things together, but I think one of the things that these videos show that hopefully is a bit refreshing is that you can just go for it and achieve some really awesome colors without planning. And you can use up materials that otherwise, I mean, in this case, I wouldn't have ever thrown away all that dye mixed with citric acid, but in general, you can have dyes left over from a project, whether they're in liquid or whatnot, and create some really, really stunning colorways. If you are a big fan of Chemnitz, whether a new fan or a returning viewer, there are many things that you can do to help support the content here on the channel. Earlier, I talked about subscribing, but the more you engage with the videos, that honestly helps a ton. Commenting, liking, sharing them with your other fiber crafting friends is a great way to help the channel grow and to honestly help me create even more content. If you're interested in contributing more directly, um, there are two main ways that you can do that. One is through the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. A lot of the yarn that is featured in my videos I sell on Etsy, in part to make room for more bare yarn and more materials for videos, but this is also a huge way that I support and fund the content that I am creating here. If you want to support the channel but you're working on some stash busting so you don't need more yarn, go and check out the Chemnitz Patreon. This is a way to subscribe monthly and help contribute to all the materials. And I offer some fun perks for patrons, including early access to new content, behind the scenes sneak peeks, and more. Uh, you can find links for all of this in the video description. 
Stay tuned. Tonight will be the sixth night of Hanukkah and the video that's coming out as part of the 2019 Chemnitz Hanukkah special is a ton of fun. Um, I hope that you guys are all having a wonderful holiday filled with light and laughter. And yeah, thank you so much for watching everyone.